Hi everyone, and welcome back to another day of YouTuber. Today, I am eating some carrot cauliflower soup. Actually, my favorite part about colder weather, which there aren't a whole lot of things, especially living in Canada where colder weather takes up the majority of the year, but specifically fall moving into winter, one of my biggest excitements comes from knowing that it's officially soup and stew season. So I have been all about making soups lately. I've been making big batches of them and I'll freeze half the soups and then use the other half as meal prep in the fridge. And I can get anywhere or stretch it anywhere from like three days use or lunch for three, like one being a baby, so really it's like lunch for two, with three servings each in the freezer as well, and it is like the best. So I just made this soup the other day. This is a carrot cauliflower ginger soup. I meal prepped it, and this is the last bowl. It is so good, like so, so good. this time of year. Butternut squash being one of my favorites, although this is a direct competitor now. If you do want more than just one recipe every Tuesday, then you can definitely come over and join the Sunday Club and get more fall recipe inspiration. In the meantime, I'm going to eat some lunch and pull a Sacred Cycles card with you because I'm in the mood. I know Tuesday over on my Coffee Talks channel is a card reading, so I can't, I think that actually might be a Sacred Cycle card reading this week if I can remember correctly. So let's do a little bonus reading while we eat some lunch today. Okay, the top card and the bottom card are feeling, I'm feeling some. Top card is 13 moons, and the bottom card, waxing crescent moon. Immediately, I noticed that both of these cards are blue, different shades, but still. The 13 moons card has mermaids, the little sisterhood of mermaids, all reaching for the moons. On each of them, or at least the ones you can see, there is something igniting their solar plexus, and then the card itself has almost like a like a cycle of something going on in the middle. So this is giving me a little bit of solar plexus energy, and then waxing crescent moon is when the, the moon is gaining momentum. There's some growth going on here, some mushrooms and a woman that's like opening herself up. But she's open, opening herself up to like the past, so... I don't know, I don't know how I would interpret this reading. The wax and crescent moon almost seems like the beginning of something, but it's the beginning of something that's obviously, this is very, very duh, but the beginning of something that's coming from the past or the end of something else. And then the 13 moons feels like all different parts of either yourself or like your sisterhood reaching for something and creating almost like a sense of identity within yourself. The 13 moons means I trust my inner wisdom. Okay, we were onto something with the gut. 
Immerse yourself in the wisdom of the old ways of tracking time. The 13 moons calendar reconnects you to the sacred cycles within the wheel of the year. This exploration of time holds the power to reconnect you with the intuitive experience of a life lived in close communion with nature's cycles. This is a reckoning of your innate power, of your intuitive guidance that has never left you. You can rest assured that an abundance of inner knowledge resides within you now, awaiting your awakening and remembering. You are being called back into harmony with nature's rhythms to help navigate your current experience and soothe you. You may find comfort in exploring your ancestry back to the ages of those who may have lived in alignment with the calendar. Those ancestors hold keys to earth-based practices that will help reawaken and strengthen your inner power and wisdom that so dearly wants to be expressed through you. Open yourself to the old ways and witness what magic comes through you. The journal prompt for this card is, what do I know about my ancestors and what can I learn from them? This is such an interesting question because I was just recently researching a couple identities or like personalities on the internet of women that identify as Wicca or witches that practice witchcraft and one in particular I was so inspired by her page and she talks a lot about how she lives in direct inspiration from her ancestors and it made me think a lot about my own ancestry. I remember when I first moved here I was reading Women Who Rose Rooted and that was such a cool book for me because I have a lot of Celtic uh, ancestors like all the Nicholsons come from Scotland. Thinking about how far back I would need to go to figure out like, when was the moon calendar? I have so many questions. Okay, we're gonna look this up right after. But first I want to read the waxing crescent moon. I let my curiosity lead the way. Gentle emerging from the darkness, the waxing crescent moon is the growing light that makes marks the beginning of a new cycle. This time of rebirth calls upon your innate childlike wonder, beckoning you to look at the world through its fresh eyes. Remember the way the world looked when you were young? Surprises could be found around any corner, as curiosity guided you your every move. Everyday magic surrounds you. Awaken to the wonder that has been right in front of you all along. Allow yourself to find childlike curiosity at every opportunity, so that you might more readily recall how wild and wondrous this world is. It's time to re-emerge and collect evidence of life's cyclical magic through a commitment to curiosity. And the journal prompt is what has sparked my curiosity lately. Wow, this is really interesting because obviously I feel like this reading is very much saying to look into or get curious about not only my ancestors but also the idea of the lunar calendar. It's not really something I've looked up before but it sounds so up my alley, so let's do that. I also know it's not the best practice to eat lunch at my desk but Ryan is off work today, so it's a big work day for me, so it's the only way that I can get things done without upsetting Easton that I'm avoiding. Not avoiding him, but just like in a separate room than him, so I have to keep the door shut. <laughs> the Lunar Calendar Explained. I'll put this website down below. Okay, for millennia, indigenous peoples have used the moon to plan for life on the land. For example, Anishinaabe and Machiu. I'm a Chiyowin. I'm gonna Google that to make sure that I'm pronouncing that right. Machiwinoki. Okay. Track the movement of the moon to determine when to plant wild rice, hunt animals, and harvest medicines. The schedule mapped out on the turtle shell is known as the lunar calendar. That's so cool. The lunar calendar is based on the movement of the moon. The moon goes around the earth in about 28 days, so in one year the moon goes around 13 times. This gives us 13 lunar months, 28 days each. I feel like something just clicked in my brain where that just makes a lot more sense. This feels like the feminine calendar versus like the masculine calendar, if you kind of get what I mean, like symbolically. The turtle shell is a visual match for the days and moons in a lunar year. If you look at a turtle shell, you will see an outer ring of small scales. These represent the 28 days in a lunar month. You will also see larger scales inside the center of the shell. These large scales represent the 13 moves that occur each lunar year. So there's technically like 13 months? Wow, I want a lunar calendar on my wall. Like I want to live my life now by the lunar calendar. That's a toxic trait. To many Native Americans, the 13 cycles of the moon represent the changing seasons and the passage of time. Each moon has its own special name that, while varying among the tribal nations, is consistent with the legend that the 13 scales on the old turtle's back hold the key to the moons. It's crazy because I know from my love of the moon that there was a tie to indigenous culture for the different names that each moon has, but I never, for whatever reason, within looking that up, I've never heard about the lunar calendar. The fact that the moon goes around the earth in about 28 days, which is symbolic or it matches up to like the feminine cycle, it all just like, that all makes, and 
and mother nature. I feel like my brain is breaking right now. Just, I can't believe this is the first time we're hearing about this because this just makes so much more sense to me. But it makes me wonder at what point, and I know it has to do with the Mayan calendar, but at what point did we all just like globally, and I know that not every country follows the actual same calendar, but for the most part, did the majority of the world agree on the Mayan calendar? Like how did that even come to be? It's a very interesting lunch chat that we're having. Plays to honor the 13 moon calendar. There we go, that's a common search, cool. Ancient civilizations used the phases of the moon to help identify the seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, because each season had three full moons. This guided them in knowing when to schedule vital activities like harvesting and hunting. This just makes so much more sense. So February is the only month I got it right, and my birthday is on February 28th. I know that that has zero tie, but it makes me feel like, <laughs> it makes me feel like a, it's a sign. A lunar calendar is typically based on the moon's 29.53 day synodic orbit around the earth. The year is then divided into 12 lunar months, which inconveniently only adds up to 354 days per year, roughly 11 days short of the actual time it takes the earth to complete one full orbit around the sun. Wow, I feel like I'm learning a lot right now. Why do most people not use a lunar calendar? Google is on it today. A solar year, the time it takes the Earth to orbit the Sun, lasts around 365 days, while a lunar year, or 12 full cycles of the Moon, is roughly 354 days. Because of this discrepancy, a purely lunar calendar, like the Islamic or Hijri Hil calendar, doesn't stay aligned with the seasons. But I thought it does. Wouldn't it stay more aligned with the seasons, though, because it's three full moons every season? We would have to add in an extra day or two. We could do that. We do that with our calendar. There's certain months that are 31 days, certain months that are 30 days. We could make it accurate. I have so many questions, but unfortunately not enough time to get them all answered. But this is definitely something I'm going to stay curious about. And I do feel like those cards were onto something with looking or leaning further into the curiosity about things about the world that when I was a little kid, this would have been the most interesting thing to me. Like, I feel like I wouldn't be able to let this go until I knew every, every single detail about it. It makes me think of Don Miguel Ruiz, or Ruiz, if anybody's ever read The Four Agreements or The Fifth Agreement, specifically in The Fifth Agreement, he talks a lot about how when you're born and you're raised, you're just told what is truth. And for the most part, you don't really start to question it until your rebellious years. And even then, you only really question the things that directly affect you. It makes me think about the fact that since birth, I've just been told, like, this month is February, this month is October, this month is this, this month is that. There's this many days in that month and this many days in that month. And just thinking about even on my own journey of learning how to live more in tune with my own cycle and more in tune with nature, I feel like I keep getting little universal nudges towards little avenues like this that just seem so interesting to me and so, so much more intuitive in terms of obviously that it's not perfect still, like it's 354 days instead of 350. 365, gosh, my brain. But there's clearly still a lot of wisdom there. And obviously with its ties to indigenous culture too, if anything, anything I've ever learned about indigenous culture just seems to be much, much more grounded and in tune with the land and with mother nature herself. So I feel like there's a lot for me to learn here, a lot for me to get educated on, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. One time, a couple, a couple months ago, I want to say it was like just before I had Easton, I tried to do my ancestry and my dad's done it before, but it doesn't go too far back. Like, I think it's only goes back like three or four generations, and then we can't find more after that. So it's hard for me to know exactly my ancestry, but I do know that it does originate in Scotland. Like, we know the Nicholson that came from Scotland over to Prince Edward Island, and that's how my dad's side of the family ended up here. So I do know that I have Celtic heritage. I do find it cool, and I am very curious about, like, Celtic myths and folklore. Gosh, maybe it'd be fun to do a whole night on that, just Celtic folklore, just in general folklore. That's my Tasty Tuesday. Thanks for having lunch with me, taking a little work break with me, and eating some carrot soup with me. If you tried this recipe, be sure to let me know. You can change it up as many times as you want, add any vegetables in it that you want. You can switch out the carrots for butternut squash or for pumpkin, for both, or for all three if you really want to. And outside of that, I will chat with you guys hopefully tomorrow. And if not, then I'll chat with you guys Tuesday for another recipe. I know one thing for sure I've never been so close before